Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan, and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint Autumn Squirrel with acrylics on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. Let's go over brushes and colors that we'll need for this painting. So we will be using three different brushes. These are Princeton Velvet Touch brushes and they come all together in a pack. Use whatever brushes you have available. You don't have to use these exact sizes. So a three quarter wash brush, a number four round, and a number eight round. I love this brush for grass painting. And that's the only time I use that brush um, for this painting is to do the grass. There are nine colors in this. So turquoise blue is only used for the background primary yellow, light pink, we only use that for the little nose of the squirrel, burnt sienna, unbleached titanium, napthal crimson, Mars black, hooker's green hue, and titanium white. If you wanna simplify the palette, you can take out the pink and just mix um, white with the red to make a pink color. Uh, we'll be using a pencil for drawing the squirrel. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is paint the background. It is a very simple background. In fact, if you want to change the color of the background to like a green color or something that would contrast against the brown of the squirrel, you're welcome to do that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and load our brush. This is the three quarter flat brush in a little bit of turquoise and then a big chunk of white. So basically we're just filling up our canvas right now so that we don't have to start with a blank white canvas. Um, it's got, we're filling up the entire canvas with this. The blue, this turquoise is gonna be a little bit darker on the outsides and then a lot lighter on the inside. I will say this because that turquoise is kind of a dark color. We don't want this background to get too dark because that's gonna it's gonna be kind of hard to paint some of the colors in this. They're not gonna stand out against the darker background. So we wanna make sure that it stays relatively light. And so you'll need a lot of white for this. Basically just taking my brush and painting big angled paint strokes kind of going in all different directions. The colors are blending on the canvas. So we have different variations of that turquoise and the white. If you were doing a different color in this background, you would basically do your color plus white and do the exact same technique that I'm doing, but only using a different color. As I approach the middle, so notice I did the outer parts first and I'm working towards the middle. I really want that middle part to be a little bit brighter so I can make sure I have extra white right in the middle. And if I need to add a little bit more darkness on the sides by adding more turquoise on the sides, I can. It's just really important to keep the background light because of the, the next parts in the painting we need to be able to show up and it would be kind of hard to paint those on a darker background. I'm gonna go silent for a little bit while I'm finishing this step. So when you're done with the background, you wanna go ahead and rinse your brush off and we want this to dry before going on to the next step. I'm gonna use a little hair dryer to dry my canvas so that I can move on to the next step. I'm gonna use a regular pencil to draw the tree stump first. So I'm going to make two little dots. These dots are about three inches from the bottom of the canvas and about six and a half inches apart. That's an estimate and you don't have to be exact. Then I'm gonna connect these dots by drawing an oval. So this is the top part of the tree stump. I'm sketching this. So when you're drawing this, you wanna do short, 
strokes with your pencil. I'm pressing kind of hard so it shows up on the camera. However, you don't need to press that hard on the canvas, especially since this is a sketch. So you want to draw lightly and it will erase if you need to. I'm going to draw both sides of the stump so they kind of go inwards and then outwards a little bit for the bottom part, like the roots that are kind of showing still. And then a little notch in the width. So I'm going to draw a little triangle and a little triangle going vertically. Next, we're going to draw the squirrel. So I'm going to start by kind of figuring out where he's going to be positioned on the stump. And we want to start over here on the left kind of middle part of that oval. And I'm going to draw a line that represents his tail. So I'm not going to draw the full shape of the tail. This is just a line that kind of decides the, the direction, the size of the tail. It's like the middle line of that shape. Almost like a very large S from the bottom of the tail to the top part where it curves. It's about six inches high if you want to kind of use that measurement to help you. And I'm going to do the back. So I'm going to start down here, the bottom of the tail, and draw like an arc line for the back. It's going to curve inwards a little bit for the neck. There's the arc of the back, the neck. And the head is like an almond shape. So I'm going to start by doing like another curve. It's going to go down and kind of go to a point. Same with right here. Curve and it's going to meet right here to kind of go to a point. So that point is where his nose is. This part right here curves inwards, connects to the head. So short sketching lines as you're drawing this. If you are struggling with a drawing, I do have a traceable for this. You can download the 11 by 14 size traceable and transfer that onto your canvas. I'm going to draw the the, the foot, so the foot's gonna be kind of awkward, more simplified. Just gonna do little points for the toes. I'm gonna do this kind of backwards, almost like a circle, but I'm not doing the complete circle for the side of his leg because he's kind of crouched down holding an acorn. I'm gonna do his side arm. It's gonna be right above that leg circle shape. This is going to Kind of go this way, hands. So he's going to be holding an acorn. His hand is kind, or his arm is kind of going horizontal or parallel to his, his bottom leg. So it's kind of flat right here, and then it goes up. And this curve goes to that bottom part of, his, of that almond shape of the head see part of his belly underneath the arm and this line is going to connect up here to under the head. You can see his other leg so kind of a horizontal line three little pointed lines very simplified foot and then Let's draw this acorn in. We don't see his other hand because the acorn is covering that. So for the acorn, we can do the top kind of curvy shape, kind of a bean shape. And then this part curves down, goes to a point and then curves back up. So if you need to draw over the hand just to get that shape in, you can, and then you can go back and erase. A 
then we can do a little stem on top of the acorn. I'm going to kind of define the shape of his head a little bit more. So instead of going to a point, it goes to kind of more of a rounded point. And then his little nose, like a little rounded triangle, and the mouth. I'm going to do a kind of a division area. So this area kind of around the mouth is going to be a lighter color when we paint that in. Gonna do his little ear sticking straight up, going to a curve and then a point, and then he has his other ear on the other side of the head, with the inner part of the ear as well, and then here's his other ear. And I'm going to do his eye, so just like a basic curvy line and curved line on the bottom, a little circle for where that highlight's going to be. And then I'm going to kind of do a shape around it because around the eye is going to be a lighter color. I'm going to do a little bit more shape to his tail, so I'm just going to take this. And do a second line, very, very sketchy line. I'm just going to go around and kind of go around that initial line we did, but at that initial line actually became the bottom line for the, the shape of the tail. So now we are ready to paint the squirrel in. I'm going to load my paint palette with burnt sienna unbleached titanium. Titanium white. And Mars black. And I'll be using the number four round brush. I'm going to start by painting the eye. For some reason, when we're doing animal paintings, it, sometimes it just makes it easier to paint the eye first and then just go around um, everything around the eye and go from there. So um, this is a very simple eye and basically it's just solid black right now. So that shape that we drew, we're just doing solid black. I'm going to rinse the brush and then we're going to paint around the eye. So I'm going to grab titanium white on my palette and unbleached titanium. So beige and white. Mix those two together. And I'm going to go around the eye. So if, if you need to, you can actually dry the black really quick because I don't want that black to kind of run into what I'm doing here. But I'm just going to do little paint strokes that contour go around that shape. So remember we kind of drew an area around the eye because this part of the head is lighter, has lighter color. I'm actually going to extend that out a little bit further than that shape. So short paint strokes, kind of dragging it outwards. Then I'm going to grab my burnt sienna. That's the brown. So I'm going to take the beige and mix it with the brown. And again, short paint strokes that kind of go around that eye shape. And now we're filling in the head area. I want to go above that line where that mouth is because we have made another kind of division line area where that's going to be a lighter color. But right now I'm just going around that beige part of the eye or around the eye. This is just the first layer. 
we'll add some texture on it later later but for now we're just kind of filling in color so taking that brown and beige color I'm going to take it down the back and define that curved back shape it goes flat where the bottom of his leg is this part right here we want to kind of emphasize how that curls curves and I'm just going to kind of fill this in I want this part to be a lighter color so I added a little bit of beige to my brush this shows up a little bit a little bit lighter and this part is a little darker so I'm grabbing more brown right here and doing curvy kind of paint strokes that are going in a circular direction I'm going to start filling in his arm so the arm I want this to show up dark too so I'm using more brown so I'm taking this and I'm defining the shape so kind of just outline the shape with your brush and just fill it in with paint strokes that go in the direction of that shape for now the hands we're just going to leave them like that kind of abstract not really defined because we're going to paint the acorn later and then kind of define the hands a little bit better for the belly region we're going to make that lighter so without rinsing the brush i'm going to grab little bits of white to my brush so this shows up lighter i'm going to fill in that color so the top part the bottom part of the belly area I'm just filling it in so you're just pretty much outlining the shape filling it in and same thing with the part that's down here where the mouth and nose are that is also a lighter color so you're using white mixed with beige and brown so you're just not rinsing the brush and just adding white to the brush and it's turning into this kind of light cream color and you're filling that in as well so we have the first layer filled in and let's start working on this tail this tail is so much fun to paint let's just start with brown so without rinsing the brush just grab brown and just start kind of remember how we like drew the tail we just started with that one initial line so paint that paint that initial line that you did but do these big kind of textured paint strokes and the fur direction goes in the direction of that kind of initial line so as you're filling this in you want to give it more shape and you're doing big paint strokes some of these lines some of these little paint strokes are kind of going outside the edges and that's kind of the point we're trying to create a bushy squirrel tail so right here these paint strokes are going off the edge of that shape and again i'm only loading my brush in the brown right now there's going to be other colors added in here but for now just get that initial layer filled in see how these see all the edges those paint strokes go off the edge of that shape of the tail next i am going to load pink onto my palette so i can paint the nose of the squirrel so this is light pink you could also just mix red and white together to create a light pink color if you're if you don't want to use that color in your paint palette and then a number four round brush i like to pinch the bristles before i'm going to do a small shape or a small painting area i'm just going to paint that little triangle kind of more like a diamond shape for the nose and rinse my brush again i'm going to paint the acorn next and i'm going to load my paint palette with primary yellow going to make a golden brown color with this yellow so you take yellow and brown mix those two together a little bit more yellow in there it's going to make a golden brown color it's important to do this kind of a different brown because the squirrel is brown so you want to want it to stand out and not blend in with the squirrel so if you need to add more yellow in there you can the hand is going to kind of disappear as we paint this bottom piece in and that's okay I'm just going to go ahead and just paint completely over the hand knowing that I can go back and repaint the hand later so nice solid coat 
on the bottom with that golden brown color. I'm going to grab white and kind of highlight this right part of the acorn, kind of drag it inwards so that the right side of the acorn has a little bit of a brighter color. And the left side of the acorn has a darker color. Speaking of darker colors, I'm going to make a darker color for the top part. I'm actually going to take a little bit of black and mix pretty much whatever's on my brush and then mix a little bit of black with the brown to make a very, very dark brown. So this part is going to show up very dark. So painting the top edge of the acorn. Yeah, just a teeny bit of water to my brush and twist it because I'm going to do this stem. And it's a very thin line, that dark color for the stem. If we need to have part of the acorn overlap part of the squirrel, that's fine. We can have that happen. I'm going to rinse the brush, pinch the brush, and grab my white. So I'm going to do these little crisscross lines on the top part of the acorn. So across this way, I'm going to do little curvy diagonal lines going one way, and then little curvy lines going the other way. So you may notice that it's dragging some of the paint or mixing with that dark color, and that's okay. And little bits of white, a little bit more white over on the right side of the acorn. Next, I'm gonna do the little white dot on the eye. So make sure your black is dry. It should be dry because I used a for me, I used a hair dryer earlier, but you don't want to do this if this is still wet. So grab your white, little tiny white dot, and that's all you need to do for the highlight of the eye. I'm going to paint the ears next. So ears are brown. You could even add a teeny bit of white in there because there is still white on my brush and I didn't rinse the brush, but it can be brown on the outside and then a darker color on the inside. So grab a little bit of that black or that really, really dark brown that we used for the acorn. So the inside part of the ear is that darker color. And then this one right here, the back ear, pretty much the same color. If you want, you can do it slightly darker or slightly lighter. I'm actually gonna go back and re-outline the top part of the head to make sure that that part's outlined and it makes it look like that ear is behind that top part of the head. Next, we're going to add some fur texture details to the squirrel. I'm gonna take my titanium white and over here where that lighter color part of his head around his eye is I'm just gonna drag some of this white outwards. And actually, if it's showing up too bright, add a little bit of the um, beige color into it so it's kind of more of a beige mixed with a white color. So I just dragged some fur paint strokes around the perimeter of that area around the eye. Then now I'm going to use this same color with the tail. So white or add a little bit of beige and white in there if it's too bright. So I started going along the, the left edge of the bottom part of the tail. I'm going to skip ahead to the end of his tail. And I'm basically just going over those paint strokes that I did earlier and it's showing up. It's giving it more depth because that bottom layer is darker and now I'm doing a lighter layer that gives it that textured look. Some of these um, paint strokes are going outside that area that I've already painted so it's making it look bushier. We don't want to try to cover up all of that brown. We still want that darker layer to still show through a lot of these paint strokes. I'm holding this brush very lightly and only using the end of the bristles. Let's make a different color. Let's get some beige and kind of mix it with some of that black and brown combination. I'm going to go over here along this edge and kind of go outside the edge of that tail. It makes it more bushy, but that gives it that fur texture. I'll take this, go along the edge, maybe grab some more white. So you're just continuing to layer on this fur texture. So I'm kind of going back and forth here between white and some of the mid colors, and you can even add some dark colors in there as well. So I'm working with some of the beige right now. I'm just going in there in this middle part. 
So depending on where you are on the tail, you want to make sure all the pieces of fur are kind of curving and going in the direction of that of the tail. Get some of this darker color and go along some of the edges over here. We want this part over here where the tail kind of meets his back to be darker and that's going to help it stand out right here. This area is a little bit more shadowy so we can add some darker brown, so brown and black pieces just in that area. I'm going to start adding some fur. So the fur isn't as crazy for the rest of his body, but it's kind of the same concept. So we have, we started kind of dark in some of the darker areas, and then we can get some of our lighter color and just do some, a few kind of curved paint strokes like on the back, and it still shows the darker color below, and then some curved paint strokes around that circular area of his leg. So more simplified fur textures. We're not going to go into crazy realistic detail here. It's a very illustrative style squirrel. And then right here, the lighter areas, I'm just kind of going back with the loose layer with the white. Got a few more of those kind of white paint strokes around the eye. And then on the back, some more kind of loose strokes. So it's important to know that I did not load a ton of paint on my brush. That lighter color, that lighter white and beige color, just little, little bits is all you need. If you load your brush with too much paint and try to do that, it's just gonna kind of get thick and messy and not look as textured. It's almost dry brush and feathery style. I'm just gonna go back around the eye um, you don't have to do this if you like the way the eye looks, but I just want to get in as close as possible around the, the negative space of the eye. And if we need to, we can touch up the black part. And then the mouth. So the mouth, um, you could even do this with a paint pen, but just a very, very thin smiley face line for the mouth. And just a little detail in the nose, kind of outline the left part of the nose. And then whiskers can be done with paint pen or even a toothpick because of how thin these lines are. But I'm just going to do this very, very gently. So I have the bristles gathered into a nice point and I'm barely pressing at all with the brush to make those very thin lines with the loose black. It helps to kind of water down the black, but not too much to where it'll start dripping. But that helps the black to be looser and you can get those thin lines in there. So I'm actually gonna go, so I'm outlining the hand there with the black, so that stands out a little bit better. So his hand is holding the acorn. And maybe we can outline some areas. So I outlined a little bit of his back. And we're gonna paint his feet in. I'm gonna use darker color for this. And it's going to be kind of tricky when we paint the tree stump in because the tree stump is going to be almost the same color as his foot. But for now, let's use our brown to just kind of paint this in. So it's like a, it's going horizontal, but then his feet kind of go to a point. It's going to look kind of weird at first, but we can detail this up later if we need to. I'm just kind of painting them in. So just kind of dragging my paint towards the right. And this might end up having to be redone anyway when we paint the tree stump. Let's transition to the tree stump. So I'm going to rinse my brush and I want to start with my beige and white. So this flat piece that our squirrel is sitting on 
by the flat top part of the stump is a light color. It's going to have some darker color tree ring texture, but for now it needs to be a light color. So white and beige mixed together. And I'm just painting that oval piece. I need to go around the squirrel the best I can. If we end up painting over parts of the squirrel, like his feet, we'll end up painting over some of that. We can always fix that. And then I am painted over that kind of triangle opening notch that we drew earlier, but I'm gonna repaint that in. I'm going around his feet. And then we can start doing this part. So let's just kind of outline this tree stump with the brown color. So this is the burnt sienna. So I'm outlining kind of the edging of it to get that shape defined. And then start filling it in. So these paint strokes, the direction of the grain needs to go kind of vertical and kind of almost curved. I'm actually going to switch to my three quarter flat here because it's a bigger area and I can just use just use the full width of the brush to paint these strokes in. But the bottom of the stump is going to be slightly darker. So I'm adding a little bit of black towards the bottom and I'm blending that up upwards. So it's going to be a little bit lighter towards the top of the stump, but much dark and sh much more darker and shadowy towards the bottom. So again, I'm just dragging the full width of my brush, mostly trying to get this filled in. I can texture it later, but as I'm filling it in, I want to kind of get my lights and darks in too. So towards the top, we have a little bit more light color. So I loaded my brush with a, a little bit of white. You can, you can do the beige if the light, the white is too bright, but still kind of dragging that downwards. You can kind of outline the top edge and then drag the rest down. Let's get some more burnt sienna. So your colors are just kind of gently blending together. Have a nice variation of different kinds of brown. And we want to kind of create that wood grain texture already with the streaks of color that are blending together, but they don't blend all the way. I'm going to do just a little bit more dark towards the bottom. Just a little bit of black and drag that up into that kind of medium brown color. And let's rinse and do a little bit of outline work. I'm going to grab my number four round brush, kind of loosen that color up a little bit with a little bit of water. Kind of twist the brush because I want to do detail work with this. And so right here, that line, I'm kind of outlining that. So look at the edging right here, making that edging a little bit kind of wavy. Gives it more of a natural look. So it's not a smooth line. It's kind of a, a rugged line. And then remember that little notch opening? I'm just gonna go ahead and paint that. So it's a little triangle that's kind of going at an angle. I'm gonna dry this so it's not smearing too much. And so this is going to make your tree stump look kind of fun and three-dimensional with this little crack. And then I'm going to take the black, make this go to a point, and then this part right here goes vertical. So there's a little triangle right here, goes down, goes to a point. It gives it that kind of cracked opening on the side of the, the edge of the tree stump. And then I want to take this outline. and go around and then back here. I'm gonna outline this back edge. So right here, 
Your acorn might be overlapping that part and that's okay. And this right here also gets outlined. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of texture detail to the stump. So without rinsing the brush, I grabbed a little bit of beige and I'm just gonna go in and do these kind of like, so that it's turning to like a gray color because there's still black on my brush. But just lightly do these like vertical lines in there. It gives the tree stump a little bit of texture. I'm gonna go in and do some tree ring texture. So we painted the top flat part of the tree stump with beige. I'm gonna go in with this white and it's not really gonna show up a lot at first, but I'm just gonna kind of do this ring on this. So it's kind of this curved line that goes around the inside of that. So there's one ring. And because this isn't showing up, we're actually gonna go dark now. So I'm gonna grab my burnt sienna, and then I'm gonna go in here and just kind of let that blend with that white. So I'm just creating this kind of texture on that flat surface. And it's blending with that white. It's creating that sort of tree stump curved texture. I'm going back here and I'm kind of fixing his foot. So I did warn you that the feet are kind of tricky. So I just took the black and kind of outlined the bottom of the foot. And I'm taking this dark brown and kind of going back and touching up the bottom of his leg area. So that the the two feet are super dark. A few more kind of fur textures on there. But when the foot dries, we can actually take black and just kind of outline the whole thing. I'm gonna take white and highlight the top part of the foot. So now it's not as flat looking. It's got some highlight on the top. I'm gonna take that white, just do maybe a few kind of loose outlines and go back on the tail and add some more white fur texture on the tail. It's basically just the same kind of stroke, but just kind of going back, I'm adding that on the, the left edge of the tail. There's a little bit of extra white on the tip of the tail and then on the left edge of it. Some more white fur texture around the eye area. A little bit of loose, very, very thin lines kind of in this area where we didn't add any fur texture yet. You could actually just leave it be and you don't have to go in and detail that up. A little highlight on the right side of his nose. And then a little highlight on the top of his hand and right side of the arm and a little bit along his back. I'm gonna do a little bit of fur on the right side, actually like a little highlight, and then I'm just dragging little bits of paint into the interior of the ear, and then added a little bit of texture on the, the right ear. I'm gonna take my black next, and do a little bit of shadowing under him, so just right under the leg area, just very loosely, almost dry brush style. So not a lot of paint on the brush, just very loosely take the black and do a little bit of darkness and shadowing just under the squirrel. Let's transition to some of the other things in this painting. And I'm gonna start doing the oak branches and let's make a, a dark brown color. So this is almost the same color that we use for the top of the acorn. And I'm using the number four round brush. So I'm loosening, or I, I loosened that paint down a little bit. I have a smudge here, but 
quickly rescued it. Um, but you want to add just a little bit of water to the dark brown so it's nice and loose because these branches are easier to paint when the paint is a little bit more flowy versus if it's like super thick. So I'm just going to do a little branch that's kind of sticking up out of the ground here. And we can do a few branches. We got to think about where, so we're going to have leaves on these branches. So we want to leave room for where the leaves would be attached to. So just a few more kind of branches and we can make the bottom piece a little bit thicker. And the other branch is hanging out of the sky over here in the upper right corner. You're welcome to change this design and adjust the branches, maybe move them in different areas, or maybe you don't like doing branches, so you're not gonna do any branches and you can just have flying leaves in your painting. So with each branch, I'm kind of starting out with a little bit more pressure on the brush. And then as I stroke down to create the branch, I'm releasing the pressure and it creates like a thinner line. Right here, I'm doing like little notches on the branches to give them a little bit more texture, more of a natural look. Let's rinse the brush and let's start painting in some of these leaves. I'm going to grab my yellow and white. So I'm actually going to do most of these leaves with yellow and white. The white is going to help get these leaves to be opaque because just yellow is going to be too translucent for the background. Too much of the background color is going to show through. So with these oak leaves, if it helps you, you can actually pre-draw all these leaves, but it helps to kind of look at a picture of an oak leaf. They're these long kind of narrow leaves with rounded edges that are just kind of sticking out. Very, um, each of them have like this irregular shape. They're not all equal. And also not all of the ends of the branches have to have leaves. I mean, you can certainly do leaves on all of them, but we could assume that some of them have already fallen off and we can paint some that are kind of flying in the air as well. So for the most part, they are just super light, pale yellow. Sometimes it helps to do like the middle line. So for this leaf, I just did the middle line first and I'm just kind of dragging my strokes outwards to create that shape. It's kind of a more simplified way to do that. Um, but yeah, you can make some that are flying in the air. If you want, you can paint some that are kind of on the ground. If you see them maybe kind of popping up next to the stump. I'm going to load Napthal Crimson onto my palette, and you can really use any red. You don't have to use this exact red. So I'm going to do another one that's kind of flying in the air over here. And um, I'm going to start adding more color to the leaves. So our next layer is going to be more color. You don't have to wait for the white to dry all the way to do that. I'm going to do another leaf over here. They can be kind of going different directions. And then, so I'm gonna rinse the brush and then start introducing some more color to some of these leaves. So this little guy over here, I'm just gonna take this red and it's kind of blending in with that color that's already there. And I'm basically just going to do this to all of the leaves, incorporate the red. I can even use some of the browns on my palette and mix some brown into 
these colors. So you're just doing a combination of brown, red, yellow. Your red and yellow will make orange. If you want to, you can even have some of the leaves um, paint them green as if they haven't turned color yet. So when you're done with your first layer, and ideally it should be dry before doing this, we can take our black and we can extend the stem down into the leaf. If you notice your color smearing too much, you may want to dry it real quick and then come back to this step. But I'm not making the line go all the way across. It's going like maybe a quarter of the way down the leaf and just kind of disappearing. And then you want to do stems, so you want to take that and kind of extend it into the leaf or extend the stem on the outside of the leaf. So just kind of paint a line and then like a little notch on the end of the stem. Next, I'm going to load my paint palette with Hooker's Green Hue. And this is going to be used for the grass. This is the number eight round brush. I love using this brush. I use it. Um, a lot for grass, although we can paint grass with the other round brush too, or even with the flat brush. But I love this brush because you can use the tip of it for the finer strokes, and you can press down harder for big strokes because it has a very fine tip to it, but it's also kind of a big round brush at the same time. So starting out, we can just use the end of the bristles and just Gently stroke from the bottom up to create your little grass blades. And we want to incorporate some different colors in here. So sometimes it's fun just to make colors up. So I grab some yellow and a little bit of beige because I want this grass to be kind of more, um, have some more warm colors in it. And then going back over that and I'm just stroking each little blade from the bottom up. You're kind of releasing your pressure when you stroke up. So when you release the pressure, the grass blade goes to more of a point. You want to just kind of change the angle of the blade. Some of the grass blades are a little bit taller and a little bit wavy, some shorter. So there's some little short ones down here. And then you're bringing them up a little bit further on the right side. And you're pressing a little bit harder as you go up and that's going to create your thicker blade or you press harder at first and then release the pressure so that makes the blade start thick at the bottom and then go thin at the top. So you're just layering on the color over here where it's short. I made that lower grass on purpose because I want to put mushrooms in that area so I want to give myself enough space for those mushrooms and then right here we're gonna do some lighter color grass blades. If you need to add a little bit of white or beige to your green to get that to show up, you can. But short little blades down here, unless you have something to disguise in that area, you can make bigger grass blades and that can kind of hide parts of the stump that you don't like. But it just gives it that little extra layer, like little pieces of grass growing at the base of that tree stump. 
I'm going to rinse my brush next and then do the mushroom. So I'm going to go back to my number four round brush for the mushroom. And these are going to be red mushrooms with kind of a cream color stem. So I'm going to actually take my red and let's use some pink. I mixed some of that light pink color into the red just because I wanted to use that pink that was still on my palette. And let's do kind of a flat top mushroom. So it kind of slopes, but then down here it goes flat and a little bit curved at the bottom because we're going to be able to see the under a little bit of the under part of this mushroom. And I'm just going in with this red and kind of making that color a little bit varied. So it's not just completely solid the same color. There's some variation in there. And then I'm going to use my beige. So without rinsing the brush, mixed, grab some of that beige color. And I'm going to paint this under part of the mushroom. So that's the opening that we see underneath and it's a lighter color. The mushroom stem is going to be a much lighter color. So I'll use white for that, but let me dry this really quick so that I don't get any paint smudging with what I'm going to do next. I rinsed my brush and then I'm going to load it into red and I'm just going to go back with a second layer over here to kind of touch this up, especially the edge right here that meets that kind of opening part. So that's kind of a darker red. And then rinse and grab the white. So right here, I'm going to take this. It's going to start from the top inside part of the edge and down all the way to the bottom of the canvas. So just a thin kind of narrow line. Then I grabbed a little bit of pink there, but we don't have to use pink for the spots. We have pink and white, I'm just doing little spots for the toadstool. And rinse. I'm going to do a second mushroom or toadstool. And actually before that, I'm going to actually do black and I'm going to do these little lines, this little outlined line, but then right here, diagonal lines that go down and out towards the bottom edge. And then maybe a little bit of shadowing right here. Drag that down into the rest of the white. And then we'll do our second little mushroom. And so this one is going to be smaller, also kind of a flat design and slightly overlapping the one on the left, and we don't see the opening of this mushroom. So just solid red. If you're going over grass blades, you can make the bottom edge kind of wavy, but if you're going over grass blades and the green is showing it through too much, you can actually take white and white it out first and then go back over with the red. I'm gonna dry this. And then do little white dots using the paintbrush and all my thoughts. And then the little stem. So this one's going to kind of sway towards the direction of the other one. The rest of this painting really is about final touch-ups and details, and details you can skip if you don't want to do those. I'm going to take black and actually loosely outline the bottom of this mushroom, but then I'm also going to add lines to my leaves. I did this earlier, but I'm going to just go back over those lines, and we can decide if we want to do like the vein lines 
on the leaves. I did a little bit of outlining on the right side of the mushroom. And this guy gets a little bit more, a little bit more detail on that branch. Some more vein lines on the leaves. Again, you don't have to do the lines on the leaves. You can leave them simplified. When you look at the final um, picture of this, there's like these little blurry dots in the background. Um, I decided I didn't really like that, but if you like the look of those blurry dots, um, you could, so it's really simple. You just take your finger and you smear like little white dots in the background and they have to be very, very thin and translucent. Just gives like the effect of bokeh. I decided after doing that, and I did that off camera, but I decided after doing that, um, that it looked a little too busy, but you can decide for yourself. And so here I'm just adding some more layers of yellow to some of the leaves. I'm going to add random highlights kind of here and there on the right side of the acorn, a little bit maybe on one of the sides of the mushrooms. And maybe the top of the leg if it needs it. We can even go in here and do a few loose white lines on the tree stump, but nothing too crazy. Just gives it the extra texture. I'm gonna go in here, maybe add some lightness to this branch. Maybe make this branch a little bit thicker on the end. Then I decided to add another little leaf on this branch. Maybe we have little grass blades that are slightly overlapping the base of the mushroom or base of both of the mushrooms. And there is my finished painting. So there's the little bokeh that I mentioned that I painted off camera but decided I didn't really like that. It made it too busy. But if you want to, you can use, I just use my finger to smear very, very pale yellow and white dots. And you wanna make sure they're very, very thin and different sizes. But that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint Autumn Squirrel. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.